So now let's go back to the Wacom tablet properties and let's take a look at how to configure some of these things like the touch and the express keys. I'm gonna look under touch options here and we can change the pointer speed, the scrolling speed and all of those things. You can go to standard gestures and this is gonna show you the different gestures that you can do. You can use one finger to tap to click or to drag. Two fingers you can use for different things like zooming and rotating. Three fingers can drag. And it's important to note that if you're holding the pen in the hand that you're touching with, you wanna keep your pen tip away from the tablet because the pen tip is going to override the touch. So keep the pen away. And I'm going to use the touch here to just navigate here to this little bar. I'm gonna use three fingers. And with three fingers, I can drag that window and move it around. Let's go on over to tablet and let's take a look at the express keys. Now you can set this to a modifier and what a modifier does is it basically gives you the option of using shift or alt or control or a combination of those. So for instance, if you wanted to draw a straight line in most digital painting programs, holding shift is the way to kind of lock it into a straight line vertically or horizontally or diagonally or alt is typically used for the color sampler. So if you wanted to be able to sample color quickly, you could set one of these to alt, you could set one of these to shift for straight lines. Control can be useful sometimes, and then so can spacebar. So if you wanna use a keystroke, you could set it to keystroke here, and then I could hit spacebar on my keyboard, and I could give this a name. I could call it pan, because that's what it's called when you pan your page and click on okay. And then now if I go back over to Photoshop and I hold down this express key here that I set for pan. You can see that my cursor switches to a hand and then I can take my page and I can pan it or drag it around. I'm holding this button down that I set to space bar and I can move my canvas around. I can also go over here to this one that I set to shift and if I hold shift I can draw a straight line. I can hold down alt and I can sample that white color. And I can paint with this white color and if I added in some other colors here then I can sample those by holding down Alt. So I can sample the red, I can sample the blue, I can sample the white. So these shortcuts really save you a lot of time. It's very useful to have these. So I'd set them all up to something. You could set them up to erase, you could set them up to resize your brush, you could set them up to undo and redo, or to save your artwork, or to create a new canvas. It's really up to you. Now let's take a look at the back panel on this tablet, because it has a few secrets that it's hiding. You're going to want to make sure that you unplug your tablet from the USB port and that you unplug it from the tablet itself because you won't be able to take the back panel off if this is still attached. So if we look on the back, there's these two little tabs here that you can use to just kind of push up with your thumbs like this and you'll unlock it and you can just remove this little cover thing. And on the back of the tablet, this is where you install your wireless receiver. That's optional. You just kind of plug it in there. And then there's a little wireless USB dongle that plugs into your USB port on your computer that transmits the data. That you can store in this little chamber here, or there's also a little compartment for it, which is on the top here. And this one's a lot easier to get to, so if you're moving your tablet around a lot, you would want to put it in here. There's some replacement nibs for your pen. There's three here, and then there's one on your tablet, so you have four total when you buy this tablet. This little silver circle here is used to remove your nibs. You put the nib in and you kind of grip it against the side of the ring and it kind of grabs the nib so you can pull it out. And there's instructions that are actually written on the tablet here that tells you what each of these things do. So for instance, on the side here, there's a little thing that tells you this turns the touch on and off and you can insert a little lock cable here if you want to lock your tablet. There's a little thing on the side here that holds your pen. So if you slide your pen into it, you'd wanna slide in the smaller end, which is the back end into that little hole. It'll actually hold your pen really well and it won't fall out and everything is nice and packaged together. I'm gonna to go ahead and put the panel on the back, just slide it back in. And there we go, our tablet's back together. Now, one thing that's really important is that when you're drawing on your tablet, you want your tablet to be parallel to your screen. So the edge of your tablet is flat to the edge of your screen because if you're drawing and it's kind of off to the side tilted or it's way over here and it's not matching your screen, your hand-eye coordination is gonna be off. It's gonna be really hard to draw. So you wanna be right in front of your tablet and have your tablet right in front of your screen like so.